There's a concept in business called a fast follow. The idea is that one company shows a product they're working on and another imitates it and gets their version out quickly, taking advantage of the buzz and beating the original to market. Body Cam, made by the two-person team at Resad Studio, looks very much like it is fast following Unrecord, a first-person shooter from the perspective of a police body cam that garnered a lot of attention for its exceptionally lifelike graphics. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Fortnite adding a PUBG-like battle royale was a literal game changer, for instance. Unfortunately, that's not the case with Body Cam. While it's an interesting proof of concept in its early access phase, it has too many critical design blind spots to be a good shooter just yet. The idea behind body cam is creative, and the rounded, dusty lens does a good job of selling the vibe of actual police-style footage. It pairs well with high-quality textures, dense debris, and lush foliage to make a visually impressive game. The lighting effects in particular are excellent, with a broad range from pitch black hallways to blindingly bright flashlights factoring heavily into the strategy in the team-based modes. Unfortunately, the concept just isn't great for a competitive first-person shooter because you don't gain anything by having a worse view of the world. It makes locating and shooting enemies more awkward, and it doesn't contribute to the experience thematically. Police aren't looking through a camera when they're actually in a shootout, and as you aren't actually playing as law enforcement, it doesn't say anything about the state of policing. It's also a bit strange the way aiming down sight means your character is lifting the gun to their chest to be in front of the body cam, not their eyes. I can see how this perspective would work great for some something like a horror game, look how spooky and atmospheric this abandoned hospital is. For body cam, however, it feels gimmicky, not immersive. That said, the fundamental shooting mechanics are solid. Body cam is a textbook example of a pixel shooter. As soon as you see a single exposed pixel of an enemy, you open fire, hoping you beat them to the punch. It only takes a single well-aimed bullet to kill or be killed, which is a matter of taste as to whether you like that style or not. But I like that it creates opportunities to win engagements through clever positioning and anticipation rather than raw shooter skills. And it feels especially important to lean around corners like this instead of running and gunning. I just wish the movement was better. I'm sure some of it has to do with the disconnected way the character's arms and bodies shift independently of the body cam itself, but it is way too easy to get stuck on minor obstructions like these that litter hallways. With how slowly and deliberately characters walk, and how fast the time to kill is, being stopped because your elbow is colliding with a table is both annoying and potentially deadly. You can theoretically climb over small obstructions, but in practice, even the smallest step up can be a major obstacle to get your character past, and every second you spend exposes you to lethal gunfire. That's a shame, because the six levels currently in body cam are generally pretty neat. The abandoned hospital, for example, has a great mix of long corridors and connecting offices. The Russian building level is spooky as hell when the built-in day-night cycle decides it's time for the sun to go down. There's also the airsoft arena, complete with a plywood mock-up of a house and these person-shaped training dummies that I've definitely shot in a moment of panic more than once. The way each level both looks and plays differently is effective at staving off the been there done that feeling after I'd played the limited selection of three game modes, at least for a little while. Team Deathmatch is my favorite way to play body cam. Up to 10 players are split into two teams of five and given the same weapons, but that gear is randomized after each round and the first to 10 wins. Maybe you all have pistols one time, but shotguns another. It's a unique spin on a tried and true shooter mode and having each round be elimination based with no respawns ratchets up the tensions considerably. Moments like this, when you and a squad mate divide the responsibility of checking corners, do a great job scratching that tactical itch. When you die, you respawn as a drone for the rest of the round, which gives you the ability to either watch things play out or scout the other team's positions. It's pretty fun to turn on your drone's flashlight and spot the enemy, doing your best to avoid getting shot down by annoyed opponents. 
standard deathmatch, unfortunately, is a bit of a disaster. Respawns are quick, and it's all about accumulating kills, which completely removes the tense tactical action from the equation. Worse, the spawns are managed terribly. Anytime you die, it's basically a dice roll whether your next life will start with you staring down the barrel of a gun. And too often, your lives look like this. It's in terrible need of significant rework, and since it's the only solo play mode, body cam doesn't have much to offer anybody who prefers to go it alone. Body Bomb, meanwhile, has one team trying to plant and defend a bomb, somewhat similar to Counter-Strike or Search and Destroy from Call of Duty. The biggest difference here is that the bomb can be planted anywhere, but the duration of the detonation timer decreases the further into enemy territory you decide to place it. It's a fine concept, but it doesn't work extremely well in practice. The main issue is that it is too easy for the bomb team to just arm immediately and then just set up camp to guard all the pathways leading to it. In my experience, it's rare for the bomb team to not score when this happens, which sucks all the competitive energy out of the match. The other issue, one that's universal across all the modes, is they just take too long. A single match can easily last 30 minutes, which feels like an eternity in a small squad shooter like this. There have been plenty of times where I have loved to just pop in for a quick match before I do something else, but the time commitment required just doesn't allow for it. Worse, because it uses peer-to-peer -peer connections instead of servers, if the host quits or disconnects at any point, no matter how far along a game is, the match ends. That's unfortunately a too common occurrence, especially when the host is on the side losing in a match. Wow. Assuming you can complete your match, your rank will go up or down on the simple leaderboard system, which gives you something to strive for. It works as expected, except for in deathmatch where only one person wins. You can finish with a very strong kill to death ratio, landing you in second place and still dropping ranks. Giving positive progress to the top several finishers is pretty common in other shooters and it seems like a strange omission here. The other thing you could advance is your cosmetics. Match performance, like kills, and wins net you R points you can spend on one of these cosmetics. No, there aren't other pages or tabs. This is the entire list. You could buy the shirt for sale, or the single hat option. Yeah, it's in early access, but it seems silly to have a store at all if there's nothing for sale. It does refresh daily with new items, but things are so expensive it's easy for the most interesting options to shuffle out before you can save up for them. Now, I might never get that tactical vest. Also, the 4000 R it would take to buy this backpack, for example, represents multiple hours of grinding. There is text in the menu that says you can pay for R points to save time, but that's not actually true. As of now, there is no mechanism to buy points, just earn them in game, which adds to the feeling the shop is simply not yet ready, even for early access. Body Cam is a mostly competent multiplayer shooter, and what you can see through the limited field of view of the titular body cam looks great, but the narrow perspective manages to strike an unfortunate imbalance of being both in the way of good action and immersion breaking. When all the elements align, like during tense games of Team Deathmatch on some strong maps, it can feel grounded and rewarding to wrestle the kickback of its punchy weapons and score a few one-shot kills before the enemy can line up their own shot. But too much of the time, it feels in need of major reworks and rebalancing especially the terrible respawn system in deathmatch and when you get killed because you got caught on a tiny obstacle. If there were meaningful progression, like more interesting cosmetics than the paltry ones available or something to chase beyond climbing up a leaderboard, then I would be more inclined to stick it out and see how things develop over time. But as it is, body cam is an interesting tech demo and little else, so you'll probably want to wait for it to be fleshed out before jumping in. For more shooter action, check out our reviews of Grey Zone Warfare and X Defiant. And for everything else, stick with IGN.